Knock Bro Nation. Welcome back, guys. Jarrell here. Hey, and I'm Josh. Today, we're here to give a review of Season 1 of Black Summer. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, as you could tell from our from our uh, uh, reactions, yeah, we absolutely loved this season we and, and um, are loving this series. Uh, you want to open it up? Yeah, guys. So uh, if you're if you're just watching this review, or you haven't checked out our reactions. Uh, the playlist is in the description. Also, check out our Facebook page for the full uncut versions of those. And um, yeah, so you know, Black Summer was something that we kind of glossed over. I don't think either of us really. I I, I remember seeing a trailer for the first season a, a while back, but then I, I probably had it in my notes for us to do a reaction for it, and it just got lost in the winds, and it just kind of you know went by on us, right? Yeah. And then, so, um, you know, Josh mentioned it. He saw it come up on his Netflix again. He's like, hey, dude, like, you know, we should we should check this out. You know what I'm saying? Like, he started watching, like, maybe a couple minutes of it. And he's like, okay, I'm going to stop because this is really yeah, good. Yeah, <laughs> I stopped it a couple minutes in because I'm like, okay, I'm loving how this layout of this show is. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I you know, from what I've heard about it, because... I'm just like you. I saw it pop up on Netflix numerous times, and I knew it was mm -hmm. in the zombie genre. And yeah. and you know, I had heard good things about it, and I'm like, I just never got to it. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? I figured the first season was over. We weren't ever going to review it, so or or react to it. So I'm like, you know what? I'll just start watching it. And a couple minutes in, and I'm like, okay, click. Yeah, <laughs> we're watching this. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it it is a completely different you know zombie genre, and I know that probably in our first couple of reactions we were saying the words walkers and stuff like that. We kept saying that. We're, I'm still saying that. Yeah, we're huge, of course, Walking Dead fans, so that was in our brain. So we had to actually train ourselves to be like, okay, we we got to get that zombie genre of the walking dead out of our minds because this is absolutely different you know this is more kind of going on the lines of like <laughs> mm -hmm. the the george romero night of the living dead type stuff i mean this is like hardcore awesome zombie genre stuff now you could say well there's parts of it that's like the walking dead where absolutely you die you turn yeah i mean that's how zombies kind of work you die mm -hmm. you turn is it though well in, in different genres yeah. you know different genres but you know just um going over really the story the, the story of black summer I really enjoyed because, you know, mm -hmm. you get a female lead and it's it's really about, you know, it, it's about Rose trying to find her daughter, but you're getting the aspects of all these other people coming together, not knowing each other at all and working together, similar to like Walking Dead. But yeah. this story just was very impactful from the start and it 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 brought you in immediately. Yeah. And look, I think we're all big fans of seeing society crumble. Right? Yeah. Like it's people are just so in, what would you know, you do? they're so drawn to that, mm -hmm. like seeing, you know, and, and seeing it from the start. I think this was like two to maybe possibly four weeks into the events that actually happened very early. Yeah. Um, and, and it, it, it was very fun to watch. Yeah. And, um, the story, as you were saying was, you know, it pulled you right from the beginning because mm -hmm. here's a mother that, and father at that point yeah. that lost their daughter. And, mm -hmm. and then on top of that, the mother, Rose, um, just, you know, has to, loses her husband. And, and what's left? The goal to get to the stadium. And um, it was cool. It was really cool. It was really cool. So, you know, we loved every single character that we that we got introduced to. Who was your favorite character? <sighs> I'm right. My favorite character was or <laughs> was, was, was or is. <laughs> well, my my favorite character. I'd say my favorite, one of my favorite characters that died early on was Ryan. I liked Ryan, the deaf guy. Oh, yes. I liked yes, Ryan absolutely. a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, he was, it's it's another different aspect of trying to communicate with somebody with, you could say, a disability. Um, you know, he's deaf. He can't speak. He can do hand signals. You can kind of understand. He he understands you, so to speak. He can't hear you, or he may not have been fully deaf. You may He can pick up on some words, but... He can't communicate with you without doing, you know, uh, hand signals or whatever, um, or sign language, excuse me. And uh, and then, so I'd say my favorite living character, I, I'm real, I really like Rose, I really do. I mean, I like Rose and Spears, mm -hmm. but I mean, like, I really like Rose just because she's the lead. You know, she's the lead protagonist. Not because, I mean, we we don't have too many lead female protagonists, but I I, I just like. Even when she's not saying anything, yeah, you can just see it in her facial expression. Like I she's like ready the dynam roll. dynamic between Rose and Spears, the the relationships. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I absolutely love that. The yeah. fact that she put all of her trust in Spears, mm -hmm. I love that, For and sure. I hope they continue to build on that relationship. Yeah, um, and, and not not that it 
I'm not talking relationship, like grow, going anywhere. Right. Um, not a sexual, know. romantic relationship. If it happens, it happens, but it, it's yeah, more of it, a... Oh, don't, don't get me yeah. wrong. If it happens, it happens. But at this point, like, yeah. they had no time to even think or consider that. Mm-hmm. Now, maybe the guys in the underground bunker could... Oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I loved that dynamic. Um, for me, uh, my favorite living character um, was William. William? Yeah. No, yeah. wait, no. He he's gone now. Sorry, <laughs> my favorite dead character was William. I liked William a lot. Too, um, yeah. My, you know, gosh, you, you like the good one. The good ones are gone. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, I don't know. Who's your favorite living character? Son, maybe. Son's a good one. Son's really good. I like yeah. that a lot. I'm gonna have to go with Sun. Sun, yeah. yeah. That is a you know even, we've mentioned it before in our in our reactions, and there were people in the comments that are mentioning it where we were like, yeah, it would be great to see subtitles of what she's saying, but it goes with it no. because in real life, no. if it happened to you in real life, somebody who speaks another language who doesn't speak English, you don't have subtitles. You're not gonna have Google Translate with you because the network is gonna be down. Yeah. So. It, it added on a different dynamic that we have we, we haven't even seen that in The Walking Dead. No, absolutely. Everyone not. speaks English. I There's... don't think I've seen that. Look, I, my memory is terrible, but yeah. I don't think I've seen that done in in anything I've watched. Yeah, not, um, no, not in a lot of movies. Usually, you, in yeah, movies, you get the subtitles. You get the subtitles, yeah. but you know, let's you, one scene from since we're on that topic that really I think was one of the most powerful scenes in the whole season was Sun in the under in the subway. Uh, was it a yeah. subway? It was when the officers took them underground to, oh. to get them to the stadium. They were just in a building or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, but. You know, when she, when she's sitting there talking in her own language for, gosh, what, five minutes straight, mm-hmm. and yeah. she's crying, and everyone else starts crying. Mm-hmm. It's like they could tell what she was saying, and it was powerful. Yeah. There were a couple of people in the comments that kind of um, looked up, you know, looked up what she was saying, and she was talking about her family. She was talking about her mother, I think, and that she wasn't able to get back to them. She wanted to see them, and she had... Um, uh, I don't know if it was a picture of her family around her neck. That's what she was looking at, her necklace. So, but you could gather what she was talking about. We, I even think I mentioned the reactions. Like, I think she's probably talking about either a family member or a loved one. But it's, here's another thing: it didn't matter what she was talking about you because could, she was hitting could, the point mm-hmm. just from us listening to yeah. it. And that, and I yeah. think that that made it powerful. Yeah, you can. Pick um, it up. You know, th- let's talk about the zombies. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> How many times did I say in our reactions? I hate running zombies. Yeah. I mean, but the fact of how fast you turn quickly, that's insane. Quickly. Um, you know, we always, since we're, look, we're going to use Walking Dead as a parallel a lot because that's right. what we've, we've watched and that's what we love. But yeah. in The Walking Dead, there is a character that we actually fear The Walking Dead that we mm-hmm. meet called Troy. Yeah. And Troy is a very, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Ambitious. Yes, but uh, he he's very um, you know he wants to he wants to as much information as he can get. He just he's a sponge. He just wants to soak up that information. Yeah, well, not wouldn't say OCD or anything, but he's just yeah. he wants to know thorough, er, thorough. There you go. Yeah, very thorough. Um, so there was one episode where we actually first meet Troy, where he is actually investigating on mm-hmm. living humans and seeing you know injuring them fatally yes and seeing how quick they will turn mm-hmm. and he's basically writing this information down in a notebook and it, it's down to weight you know race age age yeah you know and he's got and types of and, and I, I would say also different types of how you die either yeah. you get bitten you get you know just you die slowly shot in the head or not shot in the head but just shot and killed like things like that yeah and i think he mentioned it's anywhere from 30 seconds to eight hours, Mm -hmm. I I think, was the time frame. I could be completely wrong. I know there was a huge time frame of when they could turn. So to us, you know, and we've even seen it in the show where it it has been emphasized that it's a few hours. Mm -hmm. Um, This was amazingly fast. I think one of the quickest, I mean, one of the quickest that we saw early on was like, was uh, the girl that got hit by the car. That was pretty quick. Yeah, like once she died, she turned. Barbara was quick when she got flown out the window. You think it's when their heart stops? 
I think so. Because yeah. like Carmen, Carmen was shot. And as she was standing oh, there. Her heart wouldn't have stopped. I know. It would have kept pumping. It, yeah. Carmen was standing there alive. And then she started throwing up, which is kind of what we saw with the girl who got um, hit by the car and also Rose's husband. Uh, uh, Rose's threw, husband, yeah. Threw up. But she turned like in a matter of just like 10 seconds. That was it's a just, hell of a snap. Yeah, it was loud. That was a snap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, but yeah, it's it's insane how yeah. quickly they turn, and it's it's just scary because in this world, <laughs> you know, Lance is an Olympic runner. This dude, <laughs> this dude has been running. Yeah, his can we talk about time. Lance's yeah. running skills? Um, <laughs> you know, he. <laughs> It's either luck for that guy or he's got it made athletically. Like mm-hmm. this dude, uh, we spent almost a whole episode of him running, running away from one single zombie. One. One. <laughs> yeah. And now he's running down a tunnel with like 30 behind him. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I, like I do. It. Yeah. Um, you know, what else is there? So we, we talked about zombies. We've talked about our favorite characters. Well, um, the- let's talk about uh, the ending. Like how yeah. did you like yeah. the ending? Uh, I did. I mean, it was a little. It you know when they get into that stadium and you're kind of like, there's nothing. Like the stadium's completely clean. There's no tents. There's not like people camped out. Um, I mean, it's a big stadium, so it's like, where are people at? It was little. I, w- I wouldn't say it was a strange, uh, right? It was strange. Like yeah. there's not one zombie in there. No, no, they got well. It was pretty fortified for them to get in there. I don't know. It took them a little. I mean, there they was got a, in there. They easy. got in there, so there weren't all the areas weren't covered. What I'm saying but... is that gate was open. Yeah, yeah, it was. No zombies. I know, right? Now, don't get me wrong. Like, I don't. Let me go back to the zombie thing. We saw the girl that got hit by the car mm-hmm. animate turn into a zombie. When she's in the backyard, she's sniffing and yeah. smelling around. Uh-huh. Yeah. And. There, I think the guy that chased Lance was also sniffing too. He did. It's almost yeah. like they could sense where their food was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't know exactly. Like, you know, it's how, how it smells to them. If it's more sweat, it's, if it's blood, if it's just just the scent crazy. of a human being. I that's don't know. Crazy. Yeah. Um. And, and also, uh, you know, just talking about the zombie. Like, I loved how the show. Um. They didn't immediately go to the head. They didn't immediately learn that going right. to the head was was the way to get them. Yeah. Matter of fact, they're in the end of the movie or, or, or the end of the series, and they're still freaking pouring bullets into the body. We'll see. And and somebody else made a comment on that in our in our um, finale reaction is it kind of makes sense though because even though you know even even though they know that they may have to you know shoot for the head. When you have a machine gun, I mean, when you're scared, I mean, it's going to be hard. Mm-hmm. I mean, in real life, I mean, you have to deal with, you know, the shutter of the gun and all that. Yeah. It's like, it would be hard. And, you know, for us to say, well, shoot him in the head, I don't, it probably wouldn't be easy for me to do that. You know what I'm saying? Somebody picking up a, a gun for the first time. Ugh. I get that. You know what I mean? But it is a machine gun. True. But and it's an automatic. You still have to you still have to aim quite a bit. But, so. but here's the thing that I have for that. Like, you know... We as humans, you know, if we're going to shoot someone, we we know that, you know, typically a, a higher powered rifle is going to stop you mm-hmm. getting shot at the body. Yeah. And that's, you know, maybe what they're thinking as well. Why would I need right. to shoot the head? Why would I aim for a small uh, target? Right. When I can just shoot this thing. And, yeah. and but but obviously it wasn't working. No, no, it'll, it'll they'll learn just like anything else. They'll learn and try to evolve from it. But. One of the things that I, I do like about any zombie type show, and especially this one, is just seeing how human beings react to all of this. Yeah. You know, you get the good people who want to work together. They want to be able to get into a group and survive. Numbers are good, right? Then you get the people who are like, okay, like almost like the movie The Purge. The world's over. I'm going to do, I'm just going to be evil and create sex dungeons and just. <laughs> enslave people and i'm going to do what i want i'm going to do what i want you know it's almost the the um the kind of thinking that we got from alpha and the walking dead and i'm yeah. sorry guys i don't mean to keep going back but like when the apocalypse happened this lady became who she really was and mm-hmm. that was a cold-blooded killer mm-hmm. yeah i mean it just comes out in you and it's I just mean, when there's nothing left <laughs> right I mean, you you maybe reach to the lowest of the lows, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you, but you see how people survive. I mean, you see how our group has been, you know, 
desperately trying to get to a location, um, desperately trying to, we didn't see them much trying to get food and water, but I'm sure, you know, they were, they were doing that. But Mm -hmm. then you get to the, the sex dungeon and they're just parting it up. They have food, they have water, they have supplies, they have drugs. They're just parting the night away because they're like, all right, the world's ended, let's just party. And that just shows you just the different levels of humanity of how they would react to a disaster and an apocalypse like this. You know, what would you really do? Would you want to survive on your own, survive in a group of good people, or just be evil and just do whatever the hell you want? Assuming you can find good people. Exactly. It's hard to trust people. We did see the scene with Rose and Spears where they were dehydrated. Yeah. Um, You know, we didn't see them actively looking for supplies, but I tell you what, um, it certainly seems like we're going to get to that, right? Yeah. So you want to yeah. talk about season two? Well, one last thing, and I, sure. I know we're flip-flopping back, and I kind of want to go back to the relationship kind of thing where you mentioned oh, yeah. Rose yeah. and Spears. Um, the other great relationship that we had was William and Son. That was amazing. You know, those two, you know, William had a very big predicament. You know, he was given the option of throwing Son to the wolves because that one guy thought she was weak, which we know she wasn't. But... This is a. These are people who don't know each other very well, and William stood his ground and said, "Damn no!" And yeah. you know, we saw the scene where he hurt his leg, and you know, him and son, you know, hugged each other. They because, hugged each other the minute they found each other. Yeah, it was yeah, powerful. It was powerful. And that his, single yeah. little moment, that split second, was powerful. And you could see, you know, when he did die, you could see the pain in son. I mean, they they were all very sad, but. But son, you could see really took it uh, hard. Were you upset that Rose did it? No, and not son. I'm not upset at Rose. Like, look, what we've seen from this season was that Rose is a very strong character, mm-hmm. very strong, capable. Yeah. And um, so you're saying, I do know. I wish that son took him? Do you out? wish that son would have done it? And maybe look, maybe that's the dynamic of the relationship. She was so she cared about him so much that she couldn't. Maybe. Probably. I mean, because that was a split second decision. That's yeah. one thing to consider too. But she was I think in a way she actively was actively trying. Yeah, she was trying to get him to come on. He you could hear him saying, Leave me, leave me. I don't think son maybe if it was like the last second to where they're all about to be killed, she would have done it. But I, I really don't know if she would have been able to do it just because yeah. of their relationship. So yeah, yeah. Uh, let's talk about Spears because yeah, I mean we mentioned him, but uh, do, you th- do you trust him, Julius James? I, I think I guess we're is? still questioning. Do we trust this guy? I mean, I do. I think Rose does. I do, Ab- and Ab- obviously, yeah, and it, it's. They haven't gone over it, and I'm. It's okay, you know. They were were led to believe that these guys, these military guys who wanted Spears, possibly knew where he had loot. We don't really know exactly all the dangerous and bad things that he did. We didn't have time to get into it. Yeah. All we're hearing is with these two military guys or three who, who used to be Spears, um, they were just taking him back somewhere, right? So I'm kind of okay that they don't really get into it because I mean, what are you gonna do with the loot of money? Nothing. Yeah. Money, money means nothing in this world. Yeah. So, well, yeah. Um, it depends. Right? I mean, depends if people depends want on to how use... much of the world is really left, right? Um, and if yeah. there's a system. But right. um, you know, it, it, I think that the focus was more on Spears. Obviously, in the beginning, when he was being taken, and they were saying, you yeah. know, he was handcuffed. You didn't know his situation. Yeah. Then he kills the military guy. Mm-hmm. But then that second scene that we got with the military guys, I think, really emphasized their corruption more mm. than more than Spears. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, because they're sitting here taking this guy. They let the other group fall asleep before yeah. they took him. Yeah. Because they weren't going to take the group <laughs> to the stadium or anywhere. No. Because he was. And lying. furthermore, the stadium being empty proves even more that they were. There was no bad military presence. Because they're sitting there saying, "We're going to take you there." Right. That's where everyone's going, mm-hmm. and they're not there. They're not there at all. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, sweet. What else is there? Actually, uh, what's left of the world? Yeah, um, we did find out from talking with those those military guys that I, I guess it started in Denver. You going to trust them though? I don't know. <laughs> I, now, for that piece of information, I'm, I'm sure you have it to. Could right? Be, could be real. It started yeah. in Denver. Um, like we said, they they've done a lot of the shoot. We don't know exactly where our group was. But they did a lot of their shooting oh, in Canada. But you I know what though, so. I I think we could have found out because there was that scene where Lance got into the car in that small town or that town license plate. I didn't catch the license plate, yeah. and I meant to go back and check it out. Yeah. But Let, then again, yeah. a license plate doesn't mean that's where they're at. Yeah. Let us know in the comments, guys, if the 
if if it's it was ever mentioned either on a license plate or something of the Sid T that they were in, or are we just led to believe they actually are in Canada? You know, I don't so. think they are because you don't you don't reference Denver if you're in a different country, right? Well, if you're you, in Canada, well, you can to say that it started there. You know, it started there, but it and it would spread. have started in the in in in. Uh, Colorado of the United States, right? You, you see what I'm saying? Like, why mention? Well, it's a big state. I know, it's but a huge city. I know. I know what you're saying, though. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I, I don't, don't know. know. I uh, we'll have to find out if they ever say what city they're in. We just know it's potentially north. It's North America. That's all we can say. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I mean, you know, I think that's pretty much overall for season one. I mean, uh, guys, stay tuned. As you guys are watching this on Saturday. There will be a season two trailer reaction coming to you. Oh yeah, that's right. Later in the we day. already filmed it. Yeah, we already filmed it. So uh, we're gonna be rea- we uh, we're getting pumped for season. I'm two. looking forward yeah. to it because yeah. you know I don't want to give it. I don't think we did anything after the trailer. Nope, no. So nope. Uh, that trailer was awesome. Yeah, it was cool, and uh, it has me you know pumped for this season. The only person we did not see in that trailer was Lance. We didn't. I mean, last time we saw him, he's using his, you know, his track skills. I know. <laughs> so I don't know if he's. Yeah, we'll have to wait. And but see. he did this before. Like, yeah, he went from escaping the school and then all of a sudden appearing in the sex dungeon. Yeah. That's so true. it's like this so. is like an mo for Lance. But yeah, uh, yeah guys. Can't wait for season two. Can't wait. So, yeah, the dynamic between, you know, Rose and her daughter, who looks a little bit older. So I think there's going to be a little bit. I'm not sure if it's going to be a time skip or, you know, it's the actual actress who grew between season one and season two. So she's a little older. Um, And we talked about this, right? So, like, we end season one. They're wearing jackets, so it's a little bit colder out. And we're in season two, at least from the trailer. It's freaking winter. It's winter. That's awesome. That's awesome. So... Uh, you know, everybody's got longer hair. Son has long hair, you know, Spears has a beard, Spears has a beard and his hair's growing out. Um, so it's going to be cool. Yeah. Different, different element, you know, snow, uh, we're going to be running into some bad guys. See how that goes. And it seems like season two is all about getting to a plane to fly somewhere else that they think might be safe. So, um, where that's going to be, we'll have to find out, but yeah, if you guys, definitely haven't checked out black summer if you've been thinking about it or you know if uh if you're just watching this review because you're interested definitely check it out you know it's it's a really cool series and i hope that we get some news that season three is going to be coming around yeah it, it really is guys and we even had some commenters say that they they um had seen it and didn't really like it at first or didn't pick up on it but now they rewatched it with us and yeah guys that's always cool and if, if you've seen it give it another shot yeah definitely guys so let us know what you thought of season one of black summer in the comments stay tuned for the start of season two coming here soon and we will see you guys then i am Jarrell. i'm josh we're not we're out <laughs>